Uh, hey everyone, uh, my name is Sam. I'm an engineer at Cycling74, and today I'm going to talk to you about Node for Max, or, uh, oh. Hmm. oh, I went backwards, sorry about that. Node for Max, or uh, how to give your users features they didn't know they wanted, but they really, really did. Uh, so, Node for Max. There's two words here that are really important. There's this Node thing, I'm sure most of you know what that is. And uh, Max, which maybe you don't know about that. Um, Max is a visual programming environment for interactive multimedia. The idea is you have these uh, functional blocks called objects, and you connect them together using patch cords to define the flow of audio, video, and data uh, between them. Uh, so this is a simple example of what we would call a Max patcher. Uh, so Max really excels in environments where you have uh, these data streams, for example, accelerometer data or uh, maybe extracted video features that you want to map to some kind of rich media output where the mapping between these two domains is a space where you can exercise a lot of creativity. Uh, so for example, this is an instrument made by an artist called Leafcutter John. <laughs> So as you can maybe see here, he's got a few light sensors attached to this sort of piece of plastic, and he's designed an interactive system uh, that plays different sounds depending on kind of where light falls on each sensor. Uh, so we just released the latest version of our software, which is Max 8, and one of the really cool things in it is uh, this thing we're calling Node for Max. So I want to answer two questions for you, and the first one is what this Node for Max thing is, and that's actually not that hard to answer. We now are all now experts on Max, this graphical programming environment. Uh, you all know already about Node, this event-driven JavaScript runtime, and Node for Max is a library that lets users launch Node applications from inside our Max environment. Uh, so this is an extremely simple uh, Node for Max example. On the left, you've got a Node script that gets the time, and on the right, this is the Max environment. Um, so you can see here on line eight, there's this call maxapi.outlet, and for our users who are not typically Node programmers, this is all they need to do in order to uh, send a message from Node into Max to be processed inside of Max. And here it's just displaying the time, but you could imagine this maybe playing a sound or launching a video or something like this. Uh, so the what question wasn't actually very hard to answer. Maybe a slightly difficult, more difficult question to answer is why. And there was a post on our node, the node Reddit, that would definitely have been in this presentation if uh, it hadn't happened just a couple of days ago, which was sort of saying Max's steak and ice cream are really great, but you don't really combine them, so why are we combining Max with node? And uh, I think to answer that, it helps to think about this kind of curve. So imagine this curve represents all the things that people want to do, uh, sorted by how many people want to do that thing. So on the left part of the curve here, you've got the kind of stuff that uh, lots of people want to do. And when you make apps to solve these needs, uh, you get kind of purpose-built stuff that does one thing and does it really well. Uh, well, Max users are nothing like this. They exist on this other part of the curve where they all have kind of very specific purpose, uh, very specific things that they want to do, and not a lot of other people want to do those things. So we need really powerful and flexible tools to help them do that. Uh, I think that between us and our customers, we have this kind of conspiratorial camaraderie where we're willing to do for them, give them tools to do whatever it is they want to do on the understanding that they ha might have to do a bit of work to make it happen. Uh, so we have this commitment that no matter how far out on this curve our users are, we want to help them do the thing they want to do, and that's what Node for Max is really all about. Uh, a really big part of that is NPM. And NPM brings a lot of things that I think our users are going to find useful. So for example, you might be surprised to learn that there's actually not very much in Max for dealing with notions of Western music theory. This is a patch that I made uh, that uses a package called Tonal to give our users chord structures.
So NPM is cool, but uh, Node itself actually brings a lot of stuff that I think is going to be really helpful for some more advanced Max projects. Uh, this, for example, is footage from an exhibit called Particles by Daito Manabe and Rhizomatics Research that uses Max. So you can see it's this uh, really cool effect that almost looks computer generated, but it's all done practically using these orbs that roll around in a track and they're wirelessly connected to a desktop machine. Uh, I think it's super cool work that could make great use of Node. For example, uh, networking support could make it possible for the artist to control the installation remotely or for users maybe to interact using their smartphone. Um, better control of data would make it possible to maybe manage presets or different configurations. And finally, uh, the adventure of JavaScript runtime could be really useful for managing the complex interaction among all the microcontrollers and uh, sensors involved. So that's known for Max, uh, but I just want to close by saying that it's also maybe possible to think of it as Max for Node. And in fact, I'm really excited to see Node-driven work that maybe uses Max as an environment for analysis and synthesis. Uh, there are already people making really amazing stuff using these other um, media, so these other media tools to uh, present JavaScript-powered work, and I think that for some applications, Max could be another one of those. And if you wanted to find out more, you can check out our projects page. There's tons of stuff there from student work all the way up to uh, large-scale commercial projects. So uh, that's it. Thanks very much, uh, and enjoy the rest of the conference.